what's up you guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi hello i'm lydia and today i'm going to talk a bit about different my experience with different anxiety medications now i just want to put a disclaimer in this because i know i'm going to get comments saying this there is no medication out there at all that will cure your anxiety however there are medications that can help with anxiety I've been on a few different things, I'll list them. The main one that I take, and that I still take, is clonazepam, which, yes, it's a benzodiazepine, but it has easily been the most beneficial medication I have taken when it comes to my anxiety. As a side thing, with clonazepam, I take it twice a day, and then I have one tablet, PRN, if I need it midday, which sometimes I do need it and sometimes I don't. I take it morning and night, and it's something that genuinely does help with my anxiety. I can go out, I can go to a shop and actually buy things without having a panic attack and I couldn't do that before. So I've previously been on other medications such as propanolol which isn't a, it's not benzodiazepine, it's a beta blocker, it's actually technically a blood pressure medication. It's used for panic disorders and while it is very widely used and widely successful for me it made me really paranoid and it was not a good fit it made me really ill and i couldn't go back on it even if i wanted to the next medication that i went on was actually diazepam um diazepam was the first benzodiazepine i ever went on to I have never really had much of an experience with diazepam. It's it's taken the edge off things, but it's never really helped with my anxiety. Like I can, t I took it and I still felt anxious. I still felt on edge. I still didn't feel able to do things, and I believe it actually made me worse. The next medication that I went on to was. The next medication that I went on to was quetiapine. I originally, I was on quetiapine for my anxiety. I was on a low dose of 25 milligrams, and that 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 helped to begin with, but it made me really sedated, and I ended up having the dose put up because I was experiencing voices and paranoid thoughts and delusional thoughts. So I ended up upping that dose to the psychosis dose, which at one point was 400 milligrams and I'm happy to say that I'm, I don't take it anymore. I take Heliparadol now, which I think is a better antipsychotic, but that's beside the point. I personally wouldn't recommend quetiapine. I think it's one of the worst antipsychotics out there. The side effects are absolutely horrific. I just wouldn't recommend it as a medication. Like, yes, it makes me made me sleepy, don't get me wrong, made me sleepy. It also made me put on 20 pounds. It made me hungry all the time. It made me feel sick a lot of the time. It, it was a horrible medication to come off as well. It took me it took me a month longer than it should have to come off and it, it was just horrific. The next medication that I went on to was lorazepam, which is a very fast acting benzodiazepine and I was on that for around a year. I then started taking that in combination with clonazepam. I was on both lorazepam and clonazepam about just 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 over a year ago, and t taking two was it definitely helped. Don't get me wrong. I had the clonazepam that I just took a standard a few times a day, and then the lorazepam I had for when I needed it, and that was fine but eventually I got put onto lorazepam four times a day and clonazepam three times a day and it was too much for me and it just got to a point where I just stopped taking all my medication because I had no energy and I ended up in hospital. Would I recommend taking two benzos at the same time? Absolutely not. Not at all. And that brings me on to clonazepam which is what I take currently and people will argue you're just addicted to it. I can go without it. I feel I feel awful and my anxiety is horrific. I don't crave it. I can go days without taking it. Personally, I'm going to say this and some people will dis will disagree with this. I would rather take a pill and have no anxiety symptoms and 
have a risk of addiction. And I'm saying this as someone who has been through addiction. I'm a year and a half sober from cocaine. Um, I'd rather risk the addiction than feel anxious. My anxiety symptoms are horrific. It basically mimics me having epilepsy and it's it's not healthy. Now I know there are other medications like pregabalin. My grand my granddad takes pregabalin. Like my, my consultant, psychiatrist, fully trained professional, has outright said she will never prescribe pregabalin because it is just as addictive. And I agree. It works the same way that gabapentin works. And I take gabapentin for pain. I don't like taking gabapentin. I, fi I do find gabapentin addictive. Um, if I can avoid taking it, I will. Gabapentin is... It is addictive. And I find it addictive. And I don't want to become addicted to it. So I don't really take it that much. So... Yes, there are other medications, and some antidepressants are also used for anxiety as well. I feel like I should mention this. Antidepressants such as fluoroxetine, citalopram, sertraline, they're all used for anxiety. I'm pretty sure elastopram is too. I'm not 100% though. Personally, I, t I did take fluoroxetine for a very short period of time when I was under 18. It made me really ill, I reacted horribly to it, I'm allergic to some of the ingredients. Um, I was prescribed that because of my anxiety. Anxiety was the first ever diagnosis that I actually received, mental health wise. So, understandably, I've been on a lot of different medications. If anyone wants me to do like a full video on all the medications that I've been on, let me know in the comments. I just want to say that medication isn't the only option when it comes to anxiety. Therapies like CBT are actually really, really beneficial. Um, as someone who... I have done CBT and the skills that it teaches you do actually help when it comes to anxiety and panic. It's not so great when you're actually having a panic attack. When I have panic attacks, I need to have medication. I, I, I can't calm down on my own that's me there are other people like that everyone has their own experiences when it comes to medication I've just been on a lot for a long time I just want to say there's also no shame in needing medication for your mental health or needing medication for anxiety people think oh it's just anxiety is it really that bad anxiety can be more debilitating than bipolar it really depends on the severity of it. So sometimes yes, medication is the only option and that's okay. No, no one should be shamed for needing medication. You know, like some people need it and that's fine, that's life. If you've got any questions that you'd like to ask me about medication, feel free, I, don't, I genuinely don't mind talking about it. People are always like kind of afraid to ask questions when it comes to benzos, I really don't mind answering them. Personally, no, I don't find them addictive. I can go without them. My anxiety goes through the roof and I feel awful because of my anxiety, but I, I can go without it. I don't crave it. But if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to ask. I am open to that. If you'd like to support the channel, please make sure you check out the end card with all the little things like my PayPal, my Patreon, and my Amazon wishlist, all of which help me and benefit and and help this channel because I'm in a position at the minute where I am a full-time student so I can't couldn't claim benefits if I want to, wanted I don't want to I, I'm trying to get a job but everywhere's closed so um, where would I work I'm, I, I'm trying I am trying so yeah if you could check out that card that would really help and also leave a comment down below any video ideas any questions you have subscribe if you're new hit the thumbs up button because why not and i'll see you guys probably tomorrow with a new video Bye.
Bye, everybody. She's so good. <laughs>